number 10, we have graveyards. Graveyards are common things, but what isn't common is a desert graveyard for sea mammals. I'm not even sure how that makes sense, so let me explain. Another mystery of the desert came about when a surprising burial site was found in the sands. In the Atacama Desert in Chile, there's a hill, Cerro Bolina, which also means whale hill. It's 40 meters above sea level, and during some road work in 2010, was found to contain fossils of 40 whales, along with a collection of other marine mammals, dolphins, seals, and other kinds of swordfish. What a day at work that would be. Initially, it seemed like an amazing case of fossilization, but it just didn't add up. How could dozens of animals of various species have died all at once, and more importantly, had been preserved? The biggest explanation is that the numerous mammals and fish were deposited over time. The hill happened to be a place where the bodies were washed up, and nature preserved them for 6 to 19 million years. True or not, it definitely isn't something one wants to stumble upon while hiking through the hills. Coming in at number 9, we have an alien skeleton. Get a load of this freaky find. What is it? An alien looking skeleton was found buried in a leather pouch in the Atacama Desert in Chile in 2003. Oh, and not just any part of the Atacama Desert, it was in an abandoned town behind a church, just to make things creepier. The strange looking skeleton was just 6 inches in length, so I don't know, about like this big? Tiny alien, tiny little alien. Also, the carcass had just 10 ribs, where humans have 12, so this coupled with the weird look of the remains, it led people to believe that the Chilean discovery was legit an alien. Have a closer look. Like, I'm no conspiracist, but I have to say that this is weird. Too weird. However, in 2012, after an intense study on the remains, medics found that the skeleton was that of a female baby girl suffering with a number of gene mutations. It is likely that the girl had dwarfism or something of the like. Coming in at number 8, we have fairy circles. That might make you think of something cute and whimsical. Well, it's quite the opposite of that. It's actually more about a lack of life than anything charming. In the Namib Desert and in Australia, there are odd circles in the middle of the desert that are evenly spaced out and exactly Concentric. It looks like something a conspiracy theorist would claim there was evidence that a UFO landed there. More reasonable theories such as fire or winds being the reason were ruled out by the fact that these bare patches could last decades, some remaining free of plant life for as long as 75 years. It wasn't until 2017 that any type of viable explanations was put forward. The leading explanation was termite colonies, and that plant root systems do this as a means of distributing water. Neither of these fully explain why the circles remain barren for so long with no visible trace of colonies, but I guess this makes more sense than the circles being made by literal fairies. Either way, I'm not sure how I feel about this one being unexplained. It just seems a little too creepy. Coming in at number 7, a whale graveyard. Maybe I'm just thinking a little too in the box, but the last thing I would think to find in a desert would probably be a giant whale cemetery. And I can imagine that it was just as surprising to the people who stumbled upon it in the first place. Back in 2010, Chile's Atacama Desert was undergoing some construction for a highway widening project, and it was here that 75 whale skeletons were unearthed, each one laying right next to the other, mere yards apart. According to the Royal Society, journal, the graveyard appears to be the result of four separate mass strandings of the creature, with evidence strongly suggesting that the whales had ingested some kind of toxic algae along with their prey. Once the toxins were ingested, it didn't take long before the mammals began dying and washing onto flat ground, and eventually, over time, the flat sands slowly buried them. So while this might have a good explanation, you have to admit that coming across the fossilized bones of 75 whales in the middle of a desert wouldn't freak you out at first. Next up at number 6, an alien claw. The Institute in Cari Cusco, otherwise known as a group of self-proclaimed paranormal researchers, appears to have come across an inexplicable finding while searching the desert caves and tunnels of Cusco. According to the group back in 2016, they came across what they believe to be a giant alien claw, as well as an elongated skull that allegedly has real skin tissues still intact. Even more mysterious was when one of the researchers said that 
after performing x-rays on the peculiar finding, they were able to conclude that the 12 inch alleged alien hand apparently had three fingers with metallic implants. Plus, given the size of the hand, it's safe to assume that it would have belonged to a very tall individual, roughly eight to nine feet tall by the researchers' estimates. Now, to be fair, there have been very tall humans close to this size. The tallest recorded man, for example, was Robert Wadlow, and he measured eight foot eleven. So it's not impossible that it belonged to a person, but the metal fingers are still definitely suspicious. I don't know, do you think it could belong to an alien species that invaded Earth, or is it just the fossilized hand of an incredibly tall human? Coming in at number five, the Atacama humanoid. First discovered in a deserted Chilean town in the Atacama Desert in 2003, this alien-like humanoid commonly referred to as Ada measures just six inches tall and caused quite the stir upon its discovery. First of all, it was unlike anything that had ever been found, and the mysterious tiny thing had everyone absolutely perplexed. Immediately, many came forward wanting to claim the find as proof of alien life, assuming that it was some alien race that had been mummified thousands of years ago. And for a while, there wasn't actually much to counter that argument. But after 10 years, of research, scientists were finally able to confirm once and for all that the tiny six inch tall mummy was in fact human. With the help of a DNA sample extracted from Ada's bone marrow, they were able to conclude that this tiny skeleton was a premature fetus, and on top of that, the result of a rare mutation of dwarfism. But the most strange part of the whole ordeal, apparently these findings were later disputed and caused quite the controversy among scientists as a second group of researchers claimed that the anomalies previously stated by the first group were not present. I mean, honestly, I don't know much about the drama between researchers, but what I do know is that if I came across a six inch tall mummy that looked like an alien, I would probably never sleep again. Coming in at number four, mummified dogs. Maybe it's just me, but mummies just kind of give me the creeps. Like, I know there's absolutely nothing evil about them per se. They're just preserved bodies, but like there's also nothing evil about someone being buried in a graveyard, but still their ghosts run rampant. That's all I'm saying. And what's even more bone chilling than a human mummy? Well, I would say the mummy of an animal, or rather, eight million animals to be exact. The haunting discovery came about a few years back when archaeologists discovered a catacomb network built roughly 2,500 years ago under the Saqqara Desert in Egypt. And to their shock, they discovered the remains of eight million mummified dogs and puppies inside. It's believed the dogs were likely used as some kind of offering to the gods. Apparently at the time, it wouldn't have been viewed so much so as a sacrifice, but rather a pious act with the animal acting as some kind of intermediary between the donor and the gods. And if that wasn't wild enough, there are apparently many other catacombs across the same desert dedicated to different animals, such as baboons, cows, bulls, hawks, and cats, all for different rituals. I mean, I can't even really grasp the concept of that many dead of anything all in one place, and hopefully I never have to. Coming in in our number three spot, we have fairy circles. In the grasslands of the Namib Desert lies one of the most peculiar phenomenons I have ever come across. Inexplicable circular patches that have been astutely nicknamed fairy circles. These strange circles have baffled scientists for decades, as there is not yet concrete, logical explanation behind them. Of course, many have come forward with their own version of truth behind them, some saying that they're from underground dragons or that they are left behind by spirits. But of course, the most popular conspiracy surrounding them is that they are the result of UFO landings similar to the crop circle. What's maybe most mysterious is that the fairy circles grow from 6 to 40 feet throughout their lifetime and that they remain 
been in one place for up to 75 years. Until that is, for all intents and purposes, they die and disappear forever. Of course, there are a few scientific theories behind their origin, like sand termites, evaporation of water from plants, rainfall patterns, and such, but they still remain a huge mystery to even the most dedicated researchers. However, in the oral myths of the Himba people, it's believed these barren grass patches are caused by Mukuru, their original ancestor, or that they are the footprints of gods. Nonetheless, they are definitely bizarre occurrences, so all I can hope for is that they have nothing to do with aliens. Coming in in our number two spot are Marfa Lights. Found in the small desert town in Texas, the Marfa Lights are an inexplicable occurrence that have been appearing for generations. According to eyewitnesses of the phenomenon, mysterious orbs of light, roughly the size of basketballs in varying colors, will hover, split, merge, and dart across the desert lands in an impossibly predictable fashion. While the indigenous peoples would tell stories of the lights being fallen stars from the sky, paranormal investigators have theorized that they belong to wandering souls lost in the desert. And I mean, it wouldn't be the first time orbs of light have been associated with wandering entities, but still, that doesn't make it any less haunting, even if it turned out to be true. However, as I'm sure you can imagine, there are many out there who are certain that the strange lights are of otherworldly origin, specifically claiming that the lights are from alien in UFOs darting through the sky. And I mean, if they are right, that would be terrifying. Experts, of course, have tried to ease the public with theories surrounding methane gas, but truthfully, their theories are just that, their theories. The truth behind these eerie orbs of light remains a mystery, just as they have for thousands of years. And last up in our number one spot, we have Dead Sea Scrolls. About 75 years ago, one of the most remarkable archaeological finds was made. Between the years of 1946 to 1956, inside the Qumran caves of the Judean desert, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. And although it's widely regarded as an incredible find, that doesn't mean it came without its mysteries. Of the 981 texts, the big question mark came from the elusive copper scroll. From what experts can tell, it appears to be a treasure map that intricately details 64 different locations where several tons of gold and silver can be found. But what's perplexing about the scroll is that it is inscribed with a form of Hebrew that is different to the ancient Hebrew found in the rest of the text. Specifically, the dialect on the Copper Scroll is one that was commonly used nearly a hundred years later than the rest. So it begs the question, how is that possible? Was the Copper Scroll written a full 100 years later and placed with the rest? I mean, maybe? But truthfully, we have no clue exactly what went down. Of course, alien conspiracy theorists have used this as proof that an alien race assisted in making the scrolls, but as you can imagine, there is not really any real proof to back that up either. To top it off, despite several expeditions, no one has been able to find the locations of these alleged treasures, which only adds to the bone chilling mystery of it all. Number 10, Desert Glass. Flashback to 29 million years ago, an asteroid pff, struck Earth. The energy of the explosion caused a vast region of the Libyan desert to turn into glass, what has become known now as Desert Glass. Love a name that's straight to the point. Glass made from the stars, essentially. Most of it can still be found in the crater, but you can also find it in, I don't know, the tomb of one of the most famous pharaohs of Egypt. When King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened, among all of his treasures, there was a stunning scarab beetle carved from green glass. While they probably had little to no idea of where the glass came from, it is incredibly symbolic of the Egyptians' relationship to the stars. One of the knives that also accompanied the pharaoh in the afterlife was a dagger made from a meteor. Right. Whether they knew the two were connected, we can only guess, but either way, its otherworldly beauty was apparent and worthy of a king. Number 9. Gold. Did you know there was actually a gold rush in the Sahara Desert at some point? Right? The story of how it was discovered varies, but the most popular story is that a goat herder found it. They found an odd looking rock and asked his friend what it could be. His Apparently he had a very good friend because he told him that he had found a gold nugget. He could have lied and been like, that's a rock. I'll take it off your hands. 
you don't need a rock and then sold it for $1400 because that was the value. Of course word got out and people flocked onto the site as is tradition with gold rushes. Most people didn't find anything but a few got rich. Life just isn't fair. People still continue to search for gold in the area to this very day, though the chances of finding much of anything can be pretty slim. They 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 went to town on that area. Number 8. Dinosaur bones. Though it may look pretty barren, don't be deceived. The Velociraptor is just one example of a desert dwelling dinosaur that existed. It is still pretty rare to find fossils of them, but it is not unheard of. Still, paleontologists were delighted when they discovered the nearly complete skeleton of the Mansaurosaurus in a desert of modern Egypt. This colossal specimen was the size of a school bus and became one of the most monumental finds in the area. But wait, there's more! Back in 2008, paleontologists uncovered a new type of pterosaur in the Sahara among other fossils from creatures that would have lived, well, I don't know, a hundred million years ago. So not just sand after all. Getting very intense at number 7, we have war jets. 2003 was a tense time in Iraq. The United States and friends had just joined forces to launch Bush's war on terror. Now this included the Iraq war. The justification for the shock and awe bombing campaign was that the Iraqi government were hiding weapons of mass destruction. While the weapons were never found, if there were any, a fleet of hidden warplanes were found in the desert west of Baghdad. The Iraqi air force stayed out of it when the country was being attacked, presumably because they thought that they were no match for the US military and they were probably right. Instead of having a lot of their planes destroyed, they buried them. Now, some 30 odd Cold War era inceptors and brand new attack jets were found when a small part of a plane was seen poking out of the sand. Can you imagine unearthing them? How terrifying. The findings made some people even more convinced that the country were hiding weapons after all, but the US have never found them. If they are ever dug up from the sand, well, that would be the scariest desert find of them all. Time may well tell. Number six brings us to a more disturbing one. One desert brings us the emptied body of Ryle Singleton. Not just the body, the emptied body. I'm not sure how my stomach will handle this one. In 2013, a 24 year old male model from Georgia was found dead by hikers in California's Mojave Desert two and a half months after he disappeared. His eyes, lungs, liver, kidneys, and heart had been removed. When I say empty, I mean empty. No evidence of a perpetrator was ever found or even any leads as of 2016. Police felt that the removed organs did not indicate he had been murdered by an organ obsessed killer. They thought the missing organs could be blamed on scavenging animals, but it just is too odd in this case because the body was still intact. It's almost like the organs were removed professionally. Whether it was a homicide or a natural cause of death, no reason was ever found for why he died or where he did. The investigation is still going. Oh my god Jocelyn, that is horrendous. I don't like the sound of that at all. I am officially freaked out. On a bit of a lighter note, at number five, we have ancient weed. Whoa. So we knew that the Gobi Desert in northwest China was blazing hot, but the whole place got blazier. In 2008, basically, a huge stash of ancient marijuana was found buried in a tomb. Busting the oldest weed stash, archaeologists found two pounds of cannabis plants that were thought to have been preserved underground for 2.7 millennia. The stash was buried next to the body of a 35 year old Caucasian man who likely used the drug for its medicinal benefits. The question on everyone's lips is can you still get high? from it. Well, it seems that the plant still did have its resinous hairs intact. These are the thing that contain the psychoactive compounds, so probably you could get high from it. Although who knows, it's so old, who knows what that high would be like, honestly. I bet that some people would love to venture on that trip, but for me, I think I'd really rather not. Taking the number 4 spot is dinosaur tracks. I know what you're thinking, you probably don't believe me and you probably think I'm a little bit crazy. And some of my friends might agree with you, but I'm telling you that I'm not. In a desert in Utah, a hiker discovered a collection of footprints left behind 125 million years ago by a number of different dinosaurs. In 2014, volunteers spent hours sweeping, scraping, and brushing the tracks. This isn't just a small rock with some prints on it. Over 200 tracks were uncovered and in one case there was 17 consecutive prints from the same animal. Paleontologist Rebecca Hunt Foster said, it helps fill in these gaps about these animals that we don't know much about. We know they were here, we just don't find their bones. 
What you can see in the images of these tracks is a crocodile dragging its tail while apparently leaving a slash in the hardened mud. You can also see that a three toed meat eater walked there too. Some could see this as a really cool thing, some could see it as a little bit scary. Finding tracks of dinosaurs just reminds me that they were in fact real and that they once walked this earth too. Who knows what else is out there? I feel like three toed meat eater is an excellent band name, so if anyone's watching and you need a band name, have it on us. Coming in at number three, we have The Claw. Paranormal researchers found what looked like a giant alien claw in the Peruvian desert in January 2017. The claw was found in a cave near the ancient city of Cusco, and it is so big that if it belonged to a human, they would have to be nine foot tall. Now, skeptics are calling it a fake, which to be fair, given the source and the lack of DNA evidence to back it up, I'm thinking actually, maybe that isn't a bad shout. Still though, I just really like saying the claw. The claw! Alright guys, here we are at spot number two with the Lost Student Film Set. I know I was a little confused at first too. In 1923, dunes near the Santa Barbara served as the site of a legendary student film called The Ten Commandments. 90 years later, the remains of the massive movie set are being excavated. Roughly 1,500 workmen spent six weeks building the huge Egyptian city set. It included a 35 foot tall statue, a 110 foot gate, and 21 sphinx, each weighing five tons. Why was it that after production was over, did the director not truck the set back to LA or simply leave it? Standing. Peter Bronson is a filmmaker who is on the hunt to figure it out. He says, I think there were two things going on here. Hauling away all that statuary would have been very expensive, so I think he pulled a fast one and buried it. Also, if he left it standing the very next day, someone would be there filming a quick one on his set and they would be on the streets with it within a few weeks. An interesting theory for sure, Bronson has been seeking the vanished set since 1982. Some objects have already been excavated and are already on display while the rest is still buried. It'd be interesting to see what else was left behind. I can't believe that. They spend so much on a set and then they're just like, bury it, no one else can use it. That makes me feel not okay about film. All right, finally coming in at number one of our scariest things found in the desert, we have a shipwreck. A shipwreck, wait, what? A shipwreck in the desert. What, where, how, why? Questions. Well guys, I introduced to you Namibia's Skeleton Coast. Now the Skeleton Coast is very inhospitable. It's something a bit like the end of the earth. The desert land beside the ocean is home to an estimated 500 shipwrecks with rumors that the land is cursed. It seems that the Bushmen of Namibia refer to the area as the land God made in anger, whereas the Portuguese used to call it the gates of hell. Either way, sounds lovely. Basically, if your ship was run aground in this area, you would likely die. Drinking this seawater will send you mad, and there is almost no precipitation in the desert by the water. In 2016, the wreck of a 500 year old ship was found in the desert with over $10 million worth of gold coins on board. The wreckage of the Bomb Jesus set sail from Lisbon in 1533 and was headed for India when it became beached in the Namibian hellhole. It wasn't just the gold of interest to archaeologists either, there were skeletal remains of the crew found. To me, a shipwreck in the desert is so crazy. I can't get my head around it and it's really, really, really scary. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Spider Rock Art. In 2013, archaeologists were shocked to discover what can only be described as a wall of ancient spider art in the desert. It's the only known example of its kind from the old world. Dating has put the age of this to around 4000 BC, that's over 6000 years ago. The drawings depict spiders, their webs and even ensnared prey. Historians have struggled to learn more about the people who actually drew these and their strange obsession with spiders. Some believe it's part of an ancient totemic ritual to combine the spider with the power of the sun. Sounds kind of terrifying. Next up on number 9 now, we have the Sailing Stones. For many years, scientists were baffled by a mysterious phenomenon in Death Valley, one of the hottest deserts in the world. Heavy stones seem to be moving by themselves in the mud, leaving trails behind them. Sometimes they were straight, sometimes they were curvy, sometimes they just sharply changed direction. There were no footprints and no obvious ways that these stones were just moving across the desert floor. Theories sprouted up, including everything from magnetic fields to aliens or even the supernatural. Right now, the best scientific theory is that under certain winter conditions in Death Valley, enough ice and water can form to float the rocks across the muddy surface in a light breeze, leaving a trail of mud as they go. 
At number 8 now we have the Band of Holes. In the Neza Plateau in Peru lie about 6,000 man-made holes. They begin at the edge of a valley and run up a hill for about a kilometre and a half. Each one is about a metre in diameter and 50 centimetres deep. Here's the thing, locals have no idea how they were made. Archaeologists have been studying them for over 80 years now trying to figure out their origin and their purpose. It's thought they were made by the Inca Empire but theories have ranged for their existence from graves to storage sites. Number Number 7 Whales? By now I think we all know the world was a lot different before we humans got here, but it's still hard to imagine. Antarctica for instance used to be a tropical area of the world, so when I say that the Sahara wasn't always the desolate desert it is today, you know what I mean. But how do we know? Well, Whale Valley is one reason. The area that is now known as Whale Valley was covered by the lost Tethys Ocean, which explains why there are tons of fossils of some of the earliest known species of whale. That's right, incredibly well preserved specimens of species that died over 37 million years ago scatter this area in the desert. The site gives incredible insight into how whales evolved and changed over millions of years, but they aren't the only things they found. Massive shark teeth have been on Earth, creating a larger picture of who the big players were around that time. <laughs> Number six, a 700 mile long dust storm. Check out this YouTube clip. Hey! Oh! Salut, Michel! If your jaw didn't just drop, something is wrong with you. Also, for all of my book talk friends, you know, Shadow and Bone fans, you know what that looks like. It's a much sandier version of the fold. Ben Barnes, where are you? Mm. I'm not sorry if you didn't get that reference. Keep up. Imagine that thing coming towards you. In the desert, dust storms are a pretty familiar occurrence and they range in size. It's definitely not fun for sand to be sprayed in your face while you're at the beach, but now imagine that sensation going on for, I don't know, 12 hours. This dust storm was captured by NASA in May 2011 and was 700 miles in length, which is wider than the state of Texas. Why do they happen? Well, the sand isn't held down by any roots, nor does the ground get packed down by water. So if wind decides to mess around, you you better take cover. Unless you want the most painful exfoliating treatment you've ever had in your life. But at the same time, you know, do you. If it saves you money, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm joking. Please. Exfoliating is not that good for you. Number five, Kitty Hawk. The last time anyone ever heard from Sergeant Dennis Coping was on June 28th, 1942. He was on his way to the British desert base in damaged P-40 Kitty Hawk aircraft when things went horribly wrong. Like, I don't, I don't know how they can go right if you're in a flying damaged plane, but sadly, Coping and the Kitty Hawk disappeared from eyes and ears for years. The craft was only discovered in 2012 by an oil worker and found the aircraft mostly intact. Even more distressing was that there were signs of the parachute having been used as a kind of shelter. Coping must have waited beneath it, hoping that help would finally come, but they were 70 years too late. However, his body was never found alongside the plane. The plane was taken and restored for display in the El Alamein Museum, but many were displeased. They believed that the plane should have stayed there as a memorial for the man who never made it home. Number four, the Iron Man Motorcycle Man. This story, <laughs> you just can't make it up. This story is equal parts hilariously charming and mind boggling. It's, it's so impressive. It might be more impressive than Tony Stark building an Iron Man suit in the desert just by the sheer fact that this guy had less to build with. <laughs> like, the man I'm referring to, his name is Emile LeRae. Emile decided back in 1993 that he was going to road trip across the Sahara Desert in a Citroen 2CV, which is this. Check out this picture. Of course, this dollar store Herbie fully loaded broke down after he crashed it while going off road. So, so what did he do? Well, he built himself a motorcycle. He took the car apart and built himself a motorcycle. He spent 12 days on this impromptu project and with only 16 ounces of water left, he drove the dang thing home. The funniest part is he was picked up by the Moroccan police a day later and fined because his documents were for the Citroen 2CV, not an improvised motorcycle. What? Take the guy to a hospital. No pat on the back, no wow buddy. They charged him for not having his papers in order. Meanwhile, he just came from the desert. 
<laughs> oh man, like this was so good. <laughs> it's amazing. I just can't handle this story. Well, there you go. Check out this YouTube clip. Also, this is what the guy looks like. <laughs> amazing. Mm. De nombreuses fois, les problèmes se sont posés au niveau d'un petit village qui s'appelle Tilemzoun où les militaires m'ont arrêté. Donc ces militaires m'ont demandé de, de rebrousser chemin et de retourner. Number three, the Napta Stones. This channel is no stranger to mythical megaliths, and I got another one for you. The Napta Stones are the oldest known stone circle in the world. They were discovered by sheer luck in 1973. A guy named Eid Marif stumbled across them and took his colleague Fred Wendorf to see it. 700 miles south of the Great Pyramid, Napta Playa was built more than 7,000 years ago. Like many of the other stone circles we've mentioned in previous videos, many people believe these stones have mystical powers. And so did the people who made them. Kind of. Archaeologists have determined that they were constructed by a nomadic people who worshipped cattle. They were built as a way to mark the summer solstice and monsoon season, so in a way, it's possible that this could be the world's oldest astronomical observatory. Number two, Maro Prosperi. Again, can't make this story up. I can't make this story up. It is kind of an adventure story, and technically, they did find him in the Sahara Desert, so. There. This story is just wild. I can't make this up. This is survival in its truest form. Some people live for the extreme, and this Italian sports enthusiast was just that kind of person, though this may have been too much. The Marathon of Sands, or the Sahara Marathon, is the toughest foot race on Earth. It's a six day annual trek covering 156 miles, about six normal marathons. You have to be entirely self sufficient, bringing your own food, which Maro proved to be. On the fourth day, a sandstorm hit and Maro disappeared within it because he kept running and then he didn't realize that he had gone off the path. Flash forward to an eight day journey of intense dehydration and starvation. Maro did incredible things to survive including drinking his own urine when he ran out of water, licking dew off rocks, and feasting off of bats, bird eggs, and lizards he found in an abandoned temple. With no rescue in sight and days of pointless searching with no checkpoints, he tried to take his own life. But he was too dehydrated that it didn't work as his blood coagulated too soon. So he just kept walking and eventually stumbled upon a girl tending to a flock of goats. There's tons more to that story, like a lot, so it would actually take a whole video to be like, what are all the things that he did? As of 2014, Prosperi participated in the Marathon de Sable seven times and placed 12th in 2001. Even after this experience in the Sahara, he just, he was like, yeah, you know what, I survived that. I'm gonna go do other things. This man just doesn't quit. And last but not least, the Gobero skeletons. Paul Sereno and his team were looking for dinosaur skeletons when they stumbled across an even bigger surprise waiting for them. Sereno had just come from a team who uncovered a Spinosaurus and was eager for more. As I mentioned, it was really exciting for dinosaurs to be found in the desert. Instead though, he discovered the largest human graveyard in the Sahara Desert. The site was located in Gobera, Niger. Evidence suggests that the area was once a lush environment. Mixed in with the oddly placed human bones they found amphibians, reptiles, and other creatures long since passed away, so that must have meant that there was a lush forest around. They didn't even have to do that much digging to find them, as some of the bones were just poking out of the sand as if they were waving hello. Ten years and five expeditions later, Sereno has found more than 200 burial plots, some of them buried in peculiar ways. One man was found with his head inside a pot, another sitting on a turtle shell, and this one's really sad, a woman embracing two children with her hands entwined. The bones are from two separate civilizations, the Kiffian and the Tenarian, which are a thousand years apart. So how did they end up side by side? Will we ever know, or will the Sahara clutch that secret just a little longer? We'll have to wait and see. And we're starting off this list with Gaburo. In the Sahara Desert in Niger stands Gaburo. Consisting of eight archaeological sites, it was discovered in 2000 by a team of researchers led by Paul Sereno. The graveyard dates back to the Holocene period, about 10,000 years ago. The site gave archaeologists a wealth of info about early human societies in a once habitable Sahara. There were tons of burials there, both human and animal, giving researchers a small window into the lifestyle and burial practices of the people who once lived there. It looks like there was a mix of hunter-gatherer and farmer communities. Human remains along with cattle and other animals showed that there was a coexistence of early humans and domesticated animals in the area. The graveyard's location is now 
an arid desert, but at one time it was a lush, lively area with lakes and vegetation. And the aquatic and land fauna in the grave sites showed that there was a shift from a healthy green environment to the desert landscape of today. All of this is really cool, but I don't think I need to do a lot of explaining as to why finding a vast area in the desert full of buried human bones would also be kind of eerie. Number 9. The Six Foot Catfish In 2017, a previously undiscovered prehistoric species was discovered, buried in the sands of Egypt. It was named Quarmatis hitanensis, which was basically a massive sized catfish that was swimming around 37 million years ago. It was actually six and a half feet long, which is horrifying. And anatomically, uh, this, these things were basically identical to modern day catfishes. Just scaled up, of course. Not the scariest prehistoric sea creature by a long shot, because call me crazy, but I actually think catfish are kind of cute. But any animal larger than your average human being is just kind of intimidating to me, even if they are cute. And at number eight, we have the Nabta Stones. The Nabta Stones are a collection of ancient structures located in the Nubian Desert. This formation of stones date back around 6,000 to 7,000 years ago, during the late Neolithic period. The site was first discovered in the 70s by a team of scientists led by Fred Wendorf, an American archaeologist. The Napta stones are a series of these flat granite slabs and megaliths arranged in a circular and semi-circular pattern. The stones vary in size, some weigh several tons. It's still a bit of a mystery as to what they were used for. Some scholars think they were used as an early form of a calendar. The alignment of the stones with specific uh, astronomical events also means that the ancient people who built them had a sophisticated understanding of astronomy and were capable of precise measurements. The stones are also associated with the ancient cattle cult that existed in the region. Archaeological evidence suggests that people who built the stones were farmers who relied on cattle for their livelihood. The stones feature carvings and depictions of cattle showing the importance of these animals in the religious and cultural beliefs of these ancient people. But the exact purpose of the stones, the identity uh, of the people who built them, and the true extent of their knowledge about astronomy and agriculture are still relatively mysterious. Moving on to number seven now, we have desert glass. When scientists tested a scarab jewel that belonged to Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, they were surprised to find the glass inside came from before the earliest Egyptian civilization. So this begs the question, where exactly did that glass come from? Eventually they found it came from a thin sheet of glass sprinkled across a huge part of the Sahara Desert. They calculated that this glass could only have been made by a meteor impacting the atmosphere and creating a huge fireball cooking the sand below with temperatures of up to 18,000 degrees Celsius or 32,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Next up at number six now, we have the oldest pot stash in the world. In 2008, archaeologists found almost two pounds of marijuana in a 2,700 year old grave in China's Gobi Desert. That age makes it the oldest stash of cannabis ever discovered. What exactly was it doing there in that grave? Well, according to Dr. Ethan Russo, it could have been for pain control or to aid in mystic divination. The stash is now being stored in the Turpin Museum in China. Moving on to number five now, we have the Marie Man. In the late 1980s, someone flying over a remote part of the South Australian desert spotted an image below. A huge hunter, naked and armed with a stick. It could either be a woomera or a boomerang. The man is 2.6 miles tall and is actually still visible today. Experts know it must have been made in modern times as there was no record of its existence before, but it's an absolute mystery as to who designed this thing. Many people have come forward claiming that it was them, but nothing is known for sure. At number four now, we have the fairy circles. Deep in the Namibian desert lie millions of strange fairy circles. The circles are devoid of any life, but the edges are surrounded by knee-high grass. Nothing will grow in the middle, even when fertilized soil is added. The circles can reach up to 20 meters in diameter and seem to have been evenly spaced out. They never overlap. They also seem to have a lifespan of at least 75 years. Right now, the leading explanation for their existence is different termite colonies who don't want to encroach on each other's territory. Next up at number three spot now, 
that we have the plains. Now, what's one thing you don't expect to find buried in an old desert? Planes. During the 2003 coalition invasion of Iraq, the US military was surprised by the lack of enemy planes there. Intelligence reports had said that Saddam Hussein had them before the war, so where exactly were they? A few months into the war, someone noticed a tail fin sticking out of the sand near a military base. After some digging, they found 30 brand new Iraqi planes. For whatever reason, Saddam had thought he could just bury these million dollar pieces of machinery in the sand and then just dig them up later. Didn't really go to plan. Coming at number 2 now, we have the Nabta Player. Deep in the Sahara Desert, a Stone Age community built the Nabta Player, a series of standing stones built 6,500 years ago. This makes them 1,000 years older than Stonehenge and the oldest astronomical alignment of its kind ever discovered. Some of the stones face in a north-south direction, others from east to west. This seems to tell archaeologists that it had some sort of astrological significance. Perhaps they were used to mark the summer solstice or the beginning of the rainy season, back when this desert received a lot more rain. Either way, the mysterious stones are so steeped in history that we may never know the full picture. And finally, number one now, we have the mysterious oasis. In 2014, shepherds in the Tunisian desert were shocked to find a huge, beautiful blue lake where there definitely wasn't one before. Before long, locals were arriving to enjoy the oasis and call off in the extreme heat. The thing is, people aren't really sure where that lake came from. Some people point the finger at seismic activity, causing groundwater to rise to the surface. What's even stranger though is that the water started out clear and then turned blue, and then after a few days, it was green and filled with algae. The public safety office there issued a public warning that the lake is dangerous and unfit for swimming, but the mystery of its origin continues. Coming in at number 10, we have King Tut's tomb. If you look at an aerial view of the Valley of the Kings, you will see why King Tutankhamun's tomb went undiscovered for 2,000 years and change. Basically, it's in the desert. Yeah, it's near to the edge of the desert and approaching the banks of the River Nile, but the desert nonetheless. Honestly, Egypt is basically desert. Hidden by the shifting sands, his tomb was finally discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter with the investment of Lord Carnarvon. The tomb is undoubtedly one of the scariest things to be dragged up from the desert, but the excavation team were specifically looking for it. They weren't, however, looking for the curse that followed them. Ah yes, the curse of the pharaohs, one of the most worrying things ever to be brought up from the sand. The team that excavated the tomb were quickly dogged by a number of untimely deaths. On the day Carter entered the tomb, a cobra got into his pet canary's cage with the bird dead in its mouth. Now, the cobra is the symbol of the Egyptian monarchy, and the symbolism really wasn't lost on locals who began to panic. And panic, you know, actually was kind of due. Lord Carnarvon, the financial backer of the excavation project, died shortly after the tomb was first breached as a result of an infected mosquito bite. But even weirder, the bite may have matched a healed legion found on King Toot's cheek during his autopsy. Now, two of Carnarvon's half brothers also died shortly after the excavation. One of the doctors who worked on King Toot's bodies, this was radiologist Sir Archibald Douglas Reed. He died later, as did two other men. Thanks. Coming into number nine, we have bodies. In something from a scene of Breaking Bad, five bodies burned, I quote, burned beyond recognition, were found in the Arizona desert in a burned out SUV in 2012. This was a high number for sure, but not anything new for the area, which is famously dogged by drugs cartels being so close to the Mexican border. Imagine being the person who found them. Now, In this instance, it was a border control agent whose job it is to patrol the Tucson Phoenix border. Honestly though, that's not what you want to find when you're at work. Coming into number 8, we have cursed treasure. Is there cursed Aztec treasure hidden in the Utah desert? A lot of people certainly think so. The legends and myths surrounding Montezuma's treasure are enduring in the state. Did three children find some of it? Now, This story is of Austin Lyman, Jim Red, and Winston Hurst, who spent their time as kids digging up treasure in the desert around Blanding, Utah. Because of the misfortune that befell the kids when they grew up to be adults, a lot of people have claimed that the ancient relics they found were cursed. Now, Red ended up killing himself, as did two other people involved with the later investigation of the antiques. Next up, we have the Sahara Ghost Towns. Ghost towns are always creepy. 
It's hard not to feel uneasy in a village completely void of people. Even empty buildings at night uh, just give us the creeps. So imagine being in an ancient abandoned town in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Jado is an abandoned settlement in the northeastern region of Niger, near the border with Libya and Algeria. One time the town was a thriving community inhabited by the Tuareg people, nomadic Berber tribes who roamed the Sahara. The town was once a trading post and an oasis in the desert. Jado was located on the trade routes that cross the Sahara, connecting North Africa with West Africa. It consists of mud brick buildings, some that are several stories in height. Its decline began in the late medieval period, partly due to changes in these trade routes. Eventually, everyone up and left, leaving many of the structures still standing. And droughts and a lack of water were probably a big part of this mass exodus. Today, the crumbling mud brick structures are now weathered by the harsh desert conditions and the streets that were once bustling with activity are completely empty. A time capsule of a long forgotten time. Number six, the giant crocodile. In 2014, paleontologists found the remains of Machimosaurus rex in the Sahara Desert, an ancient marine reptile that lived during the Jurassic period. This was a massive creature dwarfing modern day crocs, measured twice the length of the ones that we have now. It would have weighed over 6,000 pounds. One of the craziest things about these creatures or this discovery was the size of its skull. Its skull alone was more than five feet long, which is around the height of one of the archaeologists who discovered it. This discovery was also big because up until this point, scientists thought the species had died off in the Jurassic period, but the fossil was actually dated back to the Cretaceous, meaning these creatures were alive a lot longer than they once thought. Next on the list, we have another massive sized fossil, the Archaeoceti fossil. Just over 90 miles southwest of Cairo lies, just over 90 miles southwest of Cairo lies Whale City. The region earned its name due to the remarkable abundance of high quality marine fossils found here. One of the biggest discoveries in this fossil rich valley was the Archaeoceti fossil. These were ancient whales belonging to a long extinct suborder. One of the largest Archaeoceti skeletons found in the valley stretched an impressive 69 feet in length. What sets this particular discovery apart from others, or what sets this type of whale apart from the ones we have now, is that they had hind legs, feet, and toes. This meant these guys actually traversed on land, hinting at a time when these creatures might have ventured onto land in pursuit of prey or during specific phases of their life cycle. Next, we have yet another monstrous fossil discovery. This one of a Spinosaurus, one of the coolest dinosaurs to ever roam the earth. In 2014, one of the most significant discoveries in paleontology occurred in the Sahara Desert, the unearthing of a giant Spinosaurus fossil. Spinosaurus was a massive dinosaur, one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs ever to have roamed the earth. The first Spinosaurus remains were found nearly a century ago in Egypt, but during World War II, these fossils were lost when an Allied bomb struck a museum in Munich. What was left behind were just a few surviving drawings of the dino, and for years the scientific community was left with just fragments, unable to do further research on the beast. Fast forward to 2014 though, when paleontologists struck gold in the expanses of the Sahara, specifically in eastern Morocco. The discovery of the new Spinosaurus fossil gave scientists the chance to once again delve deeper into the details of this gigantic monster. At our number three spot, we have the Eye of Sahara. The Eye of Sahara, also known as the Richat structure, is a massive circular formation that looks almost like a giant eye in the middle of the desert. It spans approximately 30 miles in diameter and can be easily seen from space. For a long time, scientists believe it to be an impact crater formed by a meteorite hitting the Earth, but turns out this isn't the case. Geologists now think that it's a highly eroded geological dome created by the uplift of deep-seated rocks and uh, or then erosion over millions of years. Even this isn't universally accepted uh, by all scientists though. There's still some mystery behind this formation. And of course, when there's mystery, there are more fantastical theories. 
I've heard stuff along the lines of the Eye of Sahara being part of the remains of the lost city of Atlantis. The circular structure matches Plato's description of Atlantis being surrounded by a series of concentric circles. Some have also speculated that maybe ancient alien activity could be the cause, believing that the formation's perfect circular shape is just too precise to be a natural occurrence and must have been created by extraterrestrials. Uh, what's very clear though is that the Eye of Sahara is a pretty spectacular sight. In 2012, a team of workers from a Polish oil company made a surprising discovery in the vast expanse of the Sahara Desert. During their expedition, they stumbled upon the wreckage of a British Royal Air Force fighter plane, a Kitty Hawk P-40, that had crashed there nearly 70 years earlier during World War II. The pilot of the plane would have been Flight Sergeant Dennis Copping, who had gone missing while defending Egypt from the German invasion of North Africa. But Copping himself was nowhere to be found. It was clear that he'd survived the initial crash though. Not only were there no bones, but a parachute was discovered, which had been repurposed to form a makeshift shelter. It's believed that he might have survived the crash and initially sought refuge near the wreckage, but running out of food and water, he eventually would have ventured out into the desert, hoping to find help or civilization. But his true fate, remains a mystery. There were no other clues as to his whereabouts. And finally, we have another long lost city, Tim God. Tim God, located at the edge of the Sahara Desert, is an ancient Roman city in present day Algeria. The city remained hidden beneath the sand for nearly a thousand years. Founded by Emperor Trajan around 100 AD, Tim God was strategically positioned as a military colony, a vital outpost in the Roman Empire's network. The city's layout was meticulously planned. It had a grid system with well defined streets, public buildings, buildings and residential areas. Tim God thrived for several centuries. It had impressive structures, a grand arch a theater, basilicas, temples. But Tim God started to decline at the fall of the Roman Empire. The city succumbed to economic challenges. It was invaded. Eventually, the city was abandoned, gradually fading into obscurity, buried beneath layers of sand. It wasn't until the 19th century that the ruins were rediscovered by European archaeologists, and what was left of the city was remarkably well preserved. Starting us off in our number 10 spot, the Taklamakan mummies. Back in 1900, a Swedish explorer Sven Hedin found the ancient city of Lulan buried under the sand of the Taklamakan Desert, otherwise known as the Great Desert of Asia. What was incredible about his find was that the lost Lulan Kingdom was a near 4,000 year old city. But the really wild part came about 80 years later. In 1979, a group of explorers came across a mummy in the ancient ruins that later became known as the Beauty of Lulan because of how perfectly she was preserved. And soon enough, more and more mummies began popping up across the desert. But the mysterious part wasn't the mummies themselves, but rather that they were Caucasian in origin, something that apparently the Chinese government at the time did not want to openly admit. Why didn't they want to admit that? Were they hiding some kind of dark secret perhaps? I mean, truthfully, we don't know, but what we do know is that the discovery proves some kind of settlement of Caucasian people among the ancient Asian city and really only created more questions than it answered. Next up in our number nine spot, the horned kangaroo. Back in 2002, an excavation in Australia's Nullarbor Desert uncovered a wild collection of megafauna fossils. But out of all of the out of this world fossils that were discovered, the strangest, most unsettling settling find was what appeared to be the skull of a horned kangaroo. Now, I would be nervous to get too close to, well, just a normal kangaroo. I mean, they aren't the most dangerous animal out there, but they have some pretty powerful legs, and if they feel threatened, they sure know how to use them. But throw in some horns, well, you could be in some real trouble. The good news is that the fossils date back sometime between the 200,000 to 500,000 years old, so we're safe from any kind of horned kangaroo attack. But still, they are definitely an unusual find. Unlike any other kangaroo, both fossilized and living, they are the only kind to have a strange bulbous snout and bony projections sticking out from above its eyes, which, I mean, just truly sounds like a terrifying sight. Coming in at number eight, 
mysterious geoglyphs. Nearly a hundred years ago, World War I pilots came across strange circular geoglyphs at the Wadi Wasad in the Black Desert of Jordan. Now, for centuries, there have been many theories about the truth behind early geoglyphs, such as the Nazca Lines in Peru. And while the running theory is that geoglyphs are man made, there are many people out there that feel they need more convincing. The strange geoglyphs in question are even more mysterious than the others, as similar ones have been revealed across Syria. Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, all dating back roughly 8,500 years old, meaning they predate the Nazca Lines by 6,000 years, which is wild. The biggest reason behind the conspiracy that geoglyphs are not man made is that these ones in particular are really only visible from the sky, and so it begs the question why design these monuments that you are unable to view? Unless it wasn't humans who were designing them. However, experts have come forward saying that they could have been created as a gift to the gods, hence the bird's eye. So I mean, who knows. Coming into number 7, we have the Shell oil cover up. In 1992, Shell were involved in concealing a crude oil leak beneath a Midland residential subdivision. In 2003, incriminating documents were unearthed buried in the desert near Las Vegas. The files buried were under 40 feet of sand, although Shell initially claimed that the material found was simply office refuse. Why bury it so far down then? Following the findings, a jury found the Texas New Mexico Pipeline, a subsidiary of Shell, guilty of covering up the spill. Why is this a scary discovery? Um, if one of the most profitable capitalist corporations in the world wants something disappeared, do you want to be the person that finds it? Honestly, I wouldn't. Coming into number six, we have the sand patterns. In 2011, Google Earth snapped aerial shots of China's vast Gobi Desert. What did they find? Weird patterns in the sand. Like, Really, really, really weird patterns. The grids measured 0.65 miles wide and 1.15 miles long, and the findings sparked a lot of speculation and conspiracy theories. Some speculated they were Chinese weapons testing sites, others said spy satellite calibration targets, replica street maps of Washington, D.C., and New York City, and some even went as far as to say that they were special messages meant for aliens. Now, it turns out that the most likely option was actually spy satellite calibration, but we don't know for sure. Maybe the sand patterns are tracks left by our number 5, the Mongolian death worm. So I guess this is kind of cheating as the death worm has never officially been found, but the legends are enduring and the reported sightings plentiful. The worm is said to be between 2 to 5 feet long, so around 1.5 meters long. It's said to be shaped like none other than a sausage, with neither head nor a tail. It's supposed to be so poisonous that touching it would cause instant death. Death. Not only that, the legend has been embellished over the years, with some accounts saying that the worm spews deadly sulfuric acid and emits a similarly deadly electrical charge. The Mongolian death worm first came to light in the West when explorer and naturalist Roy Chapman Andrews wrote about his expedition into the Gobi Desert. Now, this all went down in 1926. The acclaimed explorer found that the Mongolian natives believed firmly in the presence of the fearsome monster in the Gobi Desert, but steadfast evidence has yet to be found. Coming into number 4, we have a lost city in the Sea of Death. The Taklamakan Desert is the largest desert in China and is the world's second largest shifting sands desert. Now, the name means you can get in, but you can't get out, which is why the desert is often dubbed the Sea of Death. Hundreds of old settlements and thousands of relics have been found buried in this sea of death. Now, interestingly, this also includes the lost city of Lulan. A lot of mummified ancient bodies have been found preserved in the sand too, including the 4,000-year-old mummy of a young woman found in 1979. Now, she was dubbed the beauty of Lulan. The desert made up part of the route along the old Silk Road. Who knows what other mysteries are buried under the burning hot sands? How do you guys feel about skulls in the ground? At number three, we have horned kangaroos. Now, I don't know how you feel about kangaroos, but I've never stopped to look at them and felt like, you know what? They need horns. I really don't think that they do. It turns out though, there could have been a breed of horned kangaroos once upon a time. These horned kangaroos may have lived in an Australian desert cave, of course. In May 2002, the bizarre discovery of mutant kangaroo skulls was found in the Nullarbor Plain, Australia. Now, the team from the Western Australian Museum in Perth also found evidence of a giant lion. 
Rawr. More from Australia up next. Coming in at number two, we have the Mari Man. This is a true mystery, one that does send shivers up my spine. The Mari Man, also known as Stuart's Giant, is a massive geoglyph, a design in the ground, a huge one. He's a man holding a throwing stick. Now, it was discovered in 1998 in the outback of Australia by a plane flying over. It's 36 miles west of the small outpost town of Mari. The image in the desert sand is still visible today, but geologists have concluded that there's likely no way it could have been created without the use of GPS, which back in 1998 was pretty rudimentary. Nobody knows who created the image. To further add to the mystery, the outline is the exact reverse of the Artemis Zeus bronze raised from the bottom of the Adriatic Sea. That's the sea between Italy and Croatia. Now, this was raised in 1928, 70 years before the man was found. Finally, our only Antarctic entry, but it's a goodie. At number one, we have Blood Falls. Can you imagine being an explorer and coming across this literal vision from hell? The bloody glacier was discovered in 1911 by Australian geologist Griffith Taylor, and it has got more dramatic over the years as the ice melts. It is basically one of the most brutal and accurate metaphors for global warming ever. The falls are amid the Taylor Glacier, and for decades, people had no idea why it appeared to be gushing blood. Was it bad juju at play? Was it Mother Nature bleeding? Honestly, actually, none of the above. The red liquid isn't actually blood, it's iron rich hypersaline water. Nonetheless, can you imagine making this discovery? It looks like an omen from actual Satan, especially dramatic as a burst of red colour amongst all of the white. Mm -hmm. 